Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. This is Harriman State Park. It was donated by the Harriman family in the 70s. They had it for three generations. And uh, they wanted to give the state of Idaho a gift. Their mother, Mary, had given a substantial amount of land to the state of New York. And so the two boys kind of wanted to do the same thing. And so they gifted this park, which was a working cattle ranch for 100 years, to the state of Idaho. They were very conscientious about preservation of some of this landscape. We got eight miles of the Henry's Fork that comes through here. They love to fish and they love to hunt and uh, they just didn't want to see it developed into a bunch of condos and see it all uh, change and so that was a way for them to do that. And so a lot of the buildings are still intact. They've renovated some of them. It's kind of a ongoing process but they try to keep some of them part of the historic tour. Some of the staff live here and then the rest are rentals for, for guests. There's a hundred beds on the park that are all up for rent. <clears throat> and it's kind of tucked right in the, well, the boot shape of Idaho. It's kind of tucked up in the toe. Uh, you got Montana right there and Wyoming right there. So we can see the three states from this little corner here. That's the Continental Divide right there which drops you into Montana. And then Yellowstone is basically that ridge to the east. So we get a lot of traffic from Yellowstone coming to visit us. And we're kind of off the road a little bit, so um, people get tired of the crowds of Yellowstone because it's a very popular park. Right. They want to get somewhere quiet. They'll come over here and we'll take them riding. So these are the original buildings. They got what they were used for and also the day they were constructed. Holy cow. So they're, most of them are over 100 years old now. So we have a lot of conferences. We have band camps come. We have riding camps. Um, so they'll kind of come for a week at a time. There's a dormitory down the road there that holds 45 people. And it's been updated and stuff. It's pretty neat. So we'll bring a lot of youth and kids in, and then one of the little side activities will be that they come ride one of the evenings or whatever it may be. They're constructing or working on renovating another building. So they've got some crew right here. They're fixing some. One of the problems with these log buildings is the bottom couple tiers of logs will stay wet for so long in the spring. They, kind of get damaged. How deep does the snow get right here? Um, we like to see it four feet. We like to have three or 400 inches of snow, which is asking a lot. We don't get a lot of rain. It's very high desert, very arid. Right. But we have a very extensive reservoir system. Everything on that side of that ridge is the Island Park Reservoir. And it will hold enough water to get us down in our lower valley enough water for about a year and a half we can keep irrigating if we don't have any rain at all. One of the first barns that was constructed is this milk barn here. Some Swiss farmers came in and thought they could make a go of running a dairy farm. And uh, tough it's country the right. to the right. left. Right. Yeah. And uh, it's tough country to uh, <laughs> run dairy cows in <laughs> when it's under snow six, seven, eight months out of the year. Yes. And only growing grass three months out of the year. Oh, hello. Typically, uh, we're not this warm. We're supposedly in a heat bomb or heat dome, I think they're calling it. Okay. So we're usually cooling off for, you know, 
60, 70 is usually pretty warm for this time of year, but over 90, so I don't know that I've ever experienced that. Huh. Yeah, you'll hit 90 today. Yeah, which is, we think, ridiculous. But it's not particularly <laughs> sticky, it's dry. Yeah, it's a very dry heat. So we got eight inches of rain. Everyone called wanting to know because Yellowstone flooded a lot of the country. Right. And so we were getting calls, but we're in a caldera here. You can see it's just one big round valley and it's fairly flat. And so what was happening on the other side of the Continental Divide is all that rain was coming down through those canyons and washing them out. Where here, I don't know how many more times rain and how much more rain we could handle but it would be significant this valley could just really hold a lot of a lot of moisture and it's used to a lot of moisture with the snow we get and then that henry's fork drains it out really quick and easy and i never even saw the river rise so it's just a totally different landscape than just on the other side of the divide they my grandpa said that they would try to put up a thousand ton of loose hay with horses. So they had the jacks and forks and everything right. to, to fill these barns. And then stacks beside? Uh, they probably had loose stacks out in the field. Yeah, yeah. But they would have seven or eight teams going, you know, because they, you know, a, a good team will do about an hour or do an acre an hour. And so these are the old stalls. They like to have their teams together. And so all these stalls are set up for two horses. And I worked here for one year while they were building my new barn. And I kind of liked it. I could keep it kind of clean and it was cool. It was kind of yeah. built into the hill. Um, this is actually my mower that they let me keep in here to keep it out of the weather. I don't know how much light we can get, but they still have all the branding irons and everything held on the wall. It's kind of dark in here, but... If you enjoy seeing how our ancestors lived during America's rule yesterday, you're going to love looking at these books. Volume 1 is fieldwork showing horses and vintage tractors preparing seed beds, planting, cultivating, and harvesting the crop. Volume 2 shows the work being done in the barn and farmyard, feeding and watering the livestock, getting the crop into the barn, milking the cows, shearing the sheep, and collecting the eggs. In Volume 3, we go inside the home to see the family in the kitchen canning vegetables, in the parlor listening to the radio, and in the dining room for family supper. We also head into town to shop at the general store or visit on the town square on Saturday night. Each book has over 140 large format pages. They sell for $24.95 each, or you can buy two for $44.95, or all three for $54.95 plus shipping. Call 1-877-647-2452 to order. That's 1-877-647-2452. We'll get a better shot here in a bit, but the Tetons are there. And then just to the left of them is Little's Peak. And that was named after my great-great-grandpa. He went up in there. He went up there in 88 to go on a fishing trip and uh, came back to Salt Lake three and a half months later, grabbed Grandma's canning and says, get in the wagon. He says, I found paradise. He says we're moving and she says all I've ever wanted is wood floors and windows I finally got it here in town I'm not leaving and he said I'll leave without you and she says well at least wait till spring and so they moved up there and built a little soddy on the banks of the Teton River we actually have an old black and white photo of the family sitting on the river with their little soddy house and uh, that was in 1889 and so my grandpa and my great grandpa and my great great grandpa are all buried up in there in the same cemetery. And so I need to get my plot bought. <laughs> I think my dad already has his, but we'll have, you know, my kids are seventh generation. Me and my dad and grandpa were all born in the same hospital room because they only had one room. Okay. And uh, I, love the, I love the legacy of it. Of course. So. They tried running sheep. I guess the Harrimans only lost $1,300 that year. They ran sheep and they that said that was the best year they ever had. So the sheep were the money makers, I guess. Um, we'll slip through here. So this is my horse pasture. It runs from here up to those trees. We have about 200 acres. And we'll come in here and watch them come in. This black mare here is a uh, 
first horse I bought that I still have. She's 27 years old and she's a Morgan Quarter Horse Cross and still has a bigger motor than anything else I own. She's not slowed down one bit. She's never taken a lame step. She looks very fit. <laughs> yep, she's fit. She's a little lighter than she was when she was younger, but if she'd ever just slow down, she'd probably put a little weight on. Um, American Brabant Cross is there. And then there's some more over there. Basically anything that looks drafty and is roan is gonna be uh, out of one of my stallions. So there's some blonde Belgians over that way. Yeah, right. they, I just uh, had an old guy and he was getting a little slower on his knees. His knees were giving him fits and he needed a broke, broke, broke team. And he asked me for a broke team of geldings and I never thought I would sell them because they're part of my four up and six up and different things. But uh, he said, I will trade you these two blonde mares with the colts that were out of my studs um, for those two geldings. Huh. And so he says, I'm 72. I just need one more team to get me to the end. <laughs> and yeah, so yeah. we traded last week. Um, he let me use those and the mares all summer because I need as many horses as I can get in the summer. And we've broke them to ride this, this uh, summer and their colts are going to be dandies. One of them is out of uh, Jason Julian's stud that he raised, Legacies Clayton, okay. and one is out of my blue stud called uh, High Country Boss, and both of them are in there right now. So, um, yeah, we have a very short summer, so we're starting to dry up. We'll start snowing here in the next couple weeks. So they're going to go out and round up, and hopefully I'll get them all in and come in together here. The, the Dunn, the skinnier Dunn in the middle there, he's a full-blooded Mustang. We, had, we uh, adopted his parents. So he's 100% Mustang. And he's, the on the, the right? he's on the left. Okay. He's coming up there closer to those sorrels. Okay, yeah. He's 27 years old. Uh, another horse that has never been lame his entire life. We've had him since he was born. Uh, he was a handful. It took some it took some cowboy to get him broke, but he now he takes teeny teeny little kids. Does their first rides, probably takes 120 kids a year on their very first ride. So, but yeah, we raise mostly most of them we've raised. We do buy a couple horses from friends that we trust. But yeah, he's the old grandpa. This here is a Perch and Frisian cross. He's he does a really good job. <laughs> pretty pretty wild. Yeah. This is a little uh, full-blooded Morgan horse, just two years old. We're just getting her going, and then a full-blooded quarter horse there too. So, so you're breaking horses all the time. Yeah, we horses. we have ten babies a year to twelve, um, <laughs> and so. We usually keep most of them. We'll sell a couple as babies, and then we will go ahead and finish them, get them going at two, ride them for two years, and then hopefully they're packing guests by the time they're four. It's kind of our program, but a lot of brothers there in that herd of, yeah. herd of half drafts there. And we, re we really like the American raw bank crossed on a quarter horse or something with a little bit, little bit of fire to make them move along yeah and the, and the problem we're just getting too big we're uh, yeah, yeah. america's putting weight on every year right, and so right. my horses have continued to get bigger over the years that's interesting we've been publishing the draft horse wall calendar for over 40 years our customers have come to expect beautiful and interesting photographs of draft horses printed on high quality paper wire o bound so they lay flat on the wall Large date squares make it easy to jot down appointments or events, and every grid page includes a bonus photo. We've included photos of all the major American draft horse breeds working in the woods and farm fields, as well as performing for appreciative crowds. They cost just $17.95 each with free shipping, or get two for just $32. You can get your calendar by calling 1-877-647-2452.
or visiting our website at www.ruralheritage.com. That's 1-877-647-2452 or www.ruralheritage.com. But yeah, in the springtime, this is just lush and green, and then we don't get hardly any rain all summer long. It dries up, and our seasons are, our summer seasons, just super short. When do you hope it starts snowing? Well, I don't need it to start snowing until the end of October and sticking, because um, uh-huh. that's my season, and, and people get scared away pretty quick when it starts snowing and raining, they cancel on me. But if it starts snowing in November and and really start stacking the snow up so that by April we've had three or four hundred inches. We're pretty happy. <laughs> Better move faster, Sarah. We'll come over here and get them crossing this water. Take those up, Sarah, and shut the round pen gate, and then we'll bring the rest of these up. Lacey, come and get these. We'll have, we'll have 10 employees plus my four kids and my wife running the phones. And so it's, it's a fairly decent-sized, thriving small business. Yeah. And so if I can get two or three years out of each Wrangler, I'm happy. Um, it's kind of a catch-22 because if you got someone that's a lifer and they stay here all the time, you know they're not trying to go after other things and, and, and learn more. Right, right. But also you, you get these college kids and they'll come for a year or two and then they're on to bigger and better things. So you just I tell them to give me everything they've got and I'll be their buddy for the rest of their life and try to help them out wherever I can. And we've had probably 45 employees over the years and still friends, really good friends with a lot of them. I bet. It's imprinting on them. Yeah. It's going to stick with them the rest of their life. I had a kid that worked for me when he was way young. He was probably 10 when he started and helped me up on up through high school. And he caught me at the gas station, gave me a hug the other day. Big old tough burly guy now, you know. But just told me thanks for everything that I taught him because everything in his own personal business that he runs now, he runs a fencing business. He says he often thinks back what he learned here. And so that that's every bit as satisfying as running the business itself, you know. But we're just kind of today, you know, it's September 1st today, and we're kind of just transitioning. We've pretty much ran our summer season, which runs 
from Memorial Day till now. And then we'll kind of start transitioning this week where, you know, we're up here every single day in the summer. And then from Labor Day till Halloween, it's reservation only. And then our ride times expand. So we'll start riding at 6 or 6.30 in the morning. And the last ride can often come in as late as 9 in the evening, well after dark, because we're going out and listening to those, those elk. So our days end up being longer. Don't take quite as many people. Um, a lot of my help goes back to college. And so we kind of just run it with the family. And then a couple of friends that are, you know, either retired or, or whatever it may be that can just come up whenever I need them and really good about being flexible for me. And then we'll, we'll pack up. We leave here uh, the last day of October, take the herd down to some uh, private property I have down the road here, about 30 miles. They'll stay there for a month. We'll bounce around to some different pastures. And then by about January 1st, we have enough snow that we have to start feeding hay. We start running our, our sleigh riding business right before Christmas and run it till um, Valentine's Day usually. Then we start calving uh, in March. We'll calve through March and April, have a few foals, fire out some pigs, some goats, whatever else we got at the time. And just it's just this yearly cycle that we've kind of just put together to, to make things work. Um, try not to ever have all of our eggs in one basket. Sometimes the cows kind of have to help uh, us stay afloat. And then sometimes the horses pull their weight just fine. And the last three years, the, the horses have done really well while the, while the cattle market's been a little bit suppressed. Yeah. And so I don't know what happened if everything wasn't good in one year, but <laughs> luckily something's usually good enough to make us pull through. So. I got three more years here at the park. We bid this every 10 years. I see. And so I'm on year 17. So we, we bid on it seven years ago, got the bid back, got the contract. We'll run for three more years. And then at that point, I'll look at my kids and say, you know, do we want to keep this family business going? Uh, my dad's in his mid 60s now. And so they're kind of thinking how much more do they have in them? They do a lot of pack trips from overnight on up to six days or six nights, seven days. Uh, they're in the Tetons almost every day all summer. That's your folks? That's my folks. And so they run an outfitting business too. And so we're just gonna have to sit down and say, where are we gonna go with this family business? If my kids wanna keep it going, me and my dad will do what it takes to keep the family business going. If they don't, if they're burned out as well, we'll just have to look at it and say, you know, what do you want to do? And, and we might choose to, to sell out and go do something that doesn't require 16 hour days. So that's our introduction to the Little Family and the Dry Ridge Outfitters business they run out of Harriman State Park in Idaho. In a few weeks, we'll come back to spend more time here as Russ and his crew outfit a family to go on a trail ride into the woods. Program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information, or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.